Comrades, on April the 11th, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange was seized from the Ecuadorian embassy in London. He was arrested and forcibly dragged out by a police snatch squad after Ecuador illegally terminated his political asylum. Within hours, a US warrant for conspiracy with Chelsea Manning that was in fact issued in December 2017 was made public. The alleged conspiracy involved documents Manning, who was then a soldier, leaked in early 2010. The Iraq war logs, the Afghan war logs, and various and sundry US diplomatic cables. The single unsealed charge was for conspiracy to commit computer intrusion. But Assange's US counsel, Barry Pollock, made clear that the allegations, quote, boil down to encouraging a source to provide him information and taking efforts to protect the identity of that source. Journalists around the world should be deeply troubled by these unprecedented criminal charges. That same afternoon, Assange was found guilty of a bail offence dating back to 2012, and then on May the 1st, a judge, Deborah Taylor, sentenced Assange to 50 weeks in Belmarsh Maximum Security Prison. And she declared, you have been exploiting your privileged position to flout the law and advertise internationally your disdain for the law of this country. Now for eight years, while he was in the embassy, Assange and his legal team explained that a secret US grand jury investigation was underway. Assange himself stressed that it was, and I quote, working towards an indictment on the Espionage Act of 1917 and the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986. Now these warnings about US extradition and a secret jan grand jury were denounced as a conspiracy theory. But last month, on May the 23rd, the US Department of Justice brought 17 additional charges against Assange under the Espionage Act, carrying a prison term of 175 years. All charges are related to WikiLeaks disclosure of war crimes and human rights abuses by the US government. This is the first time that a journalist has been charged under the 1917 Espionage Act. Assange has been indicted for carrying out core journalistic activities protected under the First Amendment of the US Constitution. His fate is to be determined in a kangaroo court in February this year presided over by Judge Emma Arbuthnot. Now, Arbuthnot is the wife of a conservative politician, James Arbuthnot, who was the former chair of, the, of Parliament's Defence Select Committee and a member of the advisory board of the Royal United Services Institute for Defence and Security Studies. He's a director of Security Intelligence Consultancy, SC Strategy Limited, along with Sir John Scarlett, who is the former head of MI6. He is linked to the defence company, Thales. Now, there are almost 2,000 references in WikiLeaks databases to Thales and 61 to the Royal United Services Institute. Now, this is British imperialist class justice in action. Now, it must be stressed that the attack on WikiLeaks didn't begin under President Donald Trump. It was Barack Obama's Secretary of State at the time, Hillary Clinton, and Vice President Joe Biden, who initiated a political manhunt against Assange, describing him as a, quote, cyber terrorist and a threat to national security. Now, then, within weeks of the collateral murder video's release, Bradley Manning, who has now transitioned to Chelsea Manning, was arrested 
court-martialed and sentenced to 35 years in a military prison. Her sentence was commuted by Obama, but she is now back in jail for refusing to testify against Assange. On November 29, 2010, Obama's Attorney General, Eric Holder, said that the Department of Justice had begun a, quote, active, ongoing criminal investigation into WikiLeaks. The Democrats provided the political environment for former House Speaker Newt Gingrich to describe Assange as a terrorist who should be, quote, treated as an enemy combatant. Fox News commentator Bob Beckel declared that the US should assassinate Assange because, quote, a dead man can't leak stuff. There's only one way to do it, illegally shoot the son of a bitch. Amongst others who called for the death penalty for Assange was Donald Trump. Now the Democrats are still numbered among the most vicious and unprincipled opponents of Assange. They centre their attack on bogus claims that he worked with Russia and Trump to thwart the glorious prospect of the degraded warmonger Hillary Clinton assuming presidential office. Ignored is the fact that WikiLeaks exposed her efforts to schmooze Wall Street and a dirty tricks campaign against Bernie Sanders. It was to make the, make the plan to permanently silence Assange a reality that efforts were then launched to frame him up on bogus rape allegations while he was in Sweden in mid-August 2010. Now, after being opened and closed on three separate occasions, without a single charge being laid, a Swedish court has ruled Assange should not be detained in absentia over the allegations against him because the frame-up mounted is so threadbare. No one can deny any longer that Assange faces indefinite detention, torture, and possibly even the death penalty in the United States. All those who try and hide behind the Swedish allegations to justify a refusal to defend him, such as Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, are co-conspirators with US and British imperialism in efforts to silence one of their fiercest and most important critics. Now, Assange's life is in danger. Even before being rendered to the United States, he's been subjected to the equivalent of a slow motion assassination. UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Nils Meltzer, has declared that Assange, and I quote, has been deliberately exposed for a period of several years to progressively severe forms of cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment, the cumulative effects of which can only be described as psychological torture. And he concluded, and it's up there on the slide, in 20 years of work with victims of war, violence, and political persecution, I have never seen a group of democratic states ganging up to deliberately isolate, demonize, and abuse a single individual for such a long time and with so little regard for human dignity and the rule of law. Assange has been hospitalized already, but he is in a maximum security facility surrounded by murderers and gangsters. Anything could happen to him. Now the plight of Assange is a product of the rightward lurch by all of the imperialist powers toward dictatorial forms of rule, militarism and war. There are people in this room who have been subjected to massive state violence during the Yellow Vest protests against Macron, the president of the rich. Over 2,500 injured and around 100 seriously. 23 have lost the use of an eye, five have lost a hand and one a testicle. Over 6,000 arrests were made. Globally, even as we meet today, the press is filled with reports of how Trump came within 10 minutes of sanctioning an airstrike on Iran 
that would have set the entire Middle East aflame and threatened a third world war. Massive and sustained austerity amid grotesque levels of social inequality and a descent into militarism and war cannot be enforced by democratic means. They demand state repression, the likes of which have not been seen in Europe since the fascist regimes of the 1930s. Efforts are being made to silence Assange and WikiLeaks out of fear of the development of a politically informed and mobilized working class and in anticipation of the entry of millions, hundreds of millions into struggle. For the same reason, our news portal, the World Socialist website, is subjected to constant censorship efforts by Google and other media giants working with the state and our party in Germany has been placed on the secret service list as a left-wing extremist threat to the German state. Now there's no time to lose. The entire political establishment is ranged against Assange. But opposition to this system is growing in the working class. And it's this massive force that must be mobilised to secure freedom for Assange and for Chelsea Manning. On June the 20th, the World Socialist website International Editorial Board issued a call for a worldwide campaign to prevent Julian Assange's rendition to the US for the formation of a global defence committee to secure his freedom. You'll have copies, I know, of this statement, but it makes the following essential points. Now, the first point I want to stress is this. The aim of this campaign must be to mo politically arouse and mobilise the international working class, the most powerful source, social force on the planet. The latent solidarity of millions for Julian Assange must be transformed into a conscious political movement. The working class must make his defence the focal point for a counter-offensive against militarism and all attacks on democratic and social rights. The next point, victory in this struggle requires a political perspective. The defence of Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning must be guided by a global strategy that consciously links the fight to defend democratic rights to the real and growing social struggles of the international working class against capitalist exploitation and political oppression. The movement to secure Julian Assange's freedom must come from below. Moral appeals to the governments that are persecuting him are less than useless. Assange's freedom must be fought for independently of and in opposition to the political agents of the ruling class. Guided by such a strategy, this fight can be won. Pessimism cannot contribute anything to the fight but demoralisation. What can be achieved will be determined in struggle. Now let me cite just one important example proving the correctness of this perspective and orientation which I draw from the history of the British workers' movement. Between 1970 and 1974, the United Kingdom was engulfed in a wave of class struggle that ended with the downfall of the Conservative government. Around 50 million days were lost to strike action, including two national miners' strikes, the first national builders' strike, and two national dockers' strikes. The state responded with brutal repression. Private armies were formed. The army was on the streets conducting manoeuvres. Five shop stewards were jailed in Pentonville prison in July 1972 for picketing a container depot in East London. In response, all the major ports in the UK came to a standstill as 250,000 dockers struck. Printers in Fleet Street walked out, stopping virtually all the national daily newspapers and rolling strikes were implemented by other section of work, sections of workers. A blockade of Pentonville prison was mounted by tens of thousands 
of workers who secured the release of the Pentonville Five. Now this was a movement with revolutionary implications. The unions worked might and main to bring the situation under control. It was later exposed that 21 trade union leaders were meeting regularly with the Secret Service MI5 and that the head of the National Union of Mine Workers, Joe Gormley, was an informant for police special branch. In the end, it was left to an incoming Labour government to stabilise the situation for the ruling class and allow it to regroup and then go on the offensive under Margaret Thatcher. It was also thanks to the trade union bureaucracy, the Labour Party and the Communist Party that the state was able to get away with arresting 24 building workers for picketing and sentencing two of them to years in prison. One was the Communist Party member Des Warren and the other is now a famous actor, Ricky Tomlinson. Now one of those building workers who was arrested, Terry Renshaw, spoke to the World Socialist website and drew attention to the freeing of the Pentonville Five in order to emphasise his agreement with our campaign to free Assange. And this is what he said. To defend class war prisoners like Julian Assange, the perspective has got to be to raise the awareness and mobilise the masses. It can't be any other way. Marx said that if the masses act together, they will win. Only the power of the working class, not the official courts, is going to provide any perspective for freeing Assange. Now, I was struck by how, te how Terry's words echoed those of Yellow Vest protester Stefan, which I will also quote. We should all get together and go to where he is in prison in London and free him. What you're saying about this being international is important. In the whole world, we are almost 7 billion people. The class that is exploiting us is practically nothing. We should all unite against that class. Now, as they say in America, damn straight. But consider the stress placed here by Stefan on the international character of the struggle that must be waged. We have been fighting in France to alert workers to the implications of the globalisation of production. How this drives the ruling class in every country to slash wages and destroy essential services in order to secure advantage in a trade war for control of the world's markets that can only end in military conflict. How this has cut the ground from under the old national reformist parties and trade unions and transformed them into direct appendages of the employers and the state in their war on the working class. And we have insisted that the only way forward is through a unified movement of the international working class, whose numbers and social power have increased massively, are united objectively by the production processes that span continents, and who will be undefeatable if they combine their struggles against the common class enemy. Now these are the political conclusions that find a receptive audience among workers who have been engaged in major struggles against the employers and the state, and the same conclusions will be drawn by millions more. They will see through the lies and slanders directed against Assange and Manning, and see them as one of us, and prisoners of the class war. Now the Parti Egalité Socialiste and the International Committee of the Fourth International have made clear that we are appealing to all those who want freedom for Assange and Manning to come together to make sure this is accomplished. Our statement explains we welcome and seek the collaboration based on a principal commitment to the defence of democratic rights of all progressive socialist and left-wing individuals and organisations in this historic fight. We do not require or expect that those who join this committee agree with all aspects of the political views and programme advanced by the World Socialist website and the International Committee of the Fourth International. There must be a place for a wide range of positions, necessarily excluding those of the political right, 
among those engaged in this critical defence campaign. We only require that those who join the committee are unconditionally committed to the defence of democratic rights and recognise that the freedom of Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning depends upon the building of a popular mass movement. Now we conclude that statement with the following point. No one who is seriously committed to the defence of democratic rights can stand on the sidelines. The case of Julian Assange is a critical 21st century battleground in the defence of free speech, truth and the fight against exploitation, dictatorship and war. The basic evils of the world capitalist system. But let me also conclude with this observation. No other political tendency is so placed to lead this offensive as our own. Our entire history is based on the struggle to unite the international working class in the struggle against capitalism and for socialism. And after decades of betrayals, we now do so under conditions where the rotten reformist, Stalinist and trade union bureaucracies have discredited themselves in the eyes of advanced workers and youth everywhere. None of them have done a damn thing for Assange. We have been waging a struggle on a world scale for the freedom of Assange and Manning. Here is a montage of photos of rallies, pickets and meetings we've organised in Sydney and Melbourne, Australia, in Berlin, in India and Sri Lanka and in the UK where the conspiracy against these heroes is being played out. Now today here in Paris we're launching the next stage in that international movement. We make our appeal to the French working class with its powerful democratic and socialist traditions. Those gathered here in this room are the modern day Dreyfusards. We will go together, forward together in this historic struggle. Thank you comrades.